G'day guys, something a little bit different for you today where we've been given a physics question which tells us that a mortar shell fired at 200 metres a second at 40 degrees to the horizontal gave a range of 3,947 metres. If the same shell fired at 200 metres a second at 50 degrees to the horizontal was fired, it would have the same range if we don't consider aerodynamic factors like wind resistance and stuff like that. So rather than using this information to do anything, what the question is actually asking us to do is to prove that if no aerodynamic factors are considered, projectiles fired at complementary angles, which complementary means that angles that when added equal 90 degrees, will have identical ranges. So to prove this, guys, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to prove that regardless of our launch velocity or our launch angle, as long as it's between 0 and 90, if we have the same velocity at launch with the complement of that angle, we will get to the same range. So we will cover the same horizontal distance. Now the way we're going to do this is we're going to employ arbitrary units for our launch velocity and angle. And then I'm going to work through our projectile motion question and determine the range. I'm then going to do exactly the same, but rather than have an angle of theta, I'm going to have an angle of 90 minus theta and then I'm going to compute the range. And through that, I'm going to show that these two ranges are in fact identical. So let's get to it, guys. So what we have to start with, like any projectile motion question, guys, is we break down our initial launch velocity into its horizontal and vertical components. And the first thing that we always do in any projectile motion question as well is we find the time that the projectile is in the air for. So the fact that it determines the time that any projectile is in the air for is the component of its initial velocity in the vertical direction, i.e. this component here. The larger the component, the longer that the object must be in the air. So once we find how long it takes for the object to reach its maximum height, so in the case of up here, we've got this point here, we have to double it because it will take exactly the same time to reach the ground. So like the diagram suggests, the vertical component of the initial velocity is equal to the initial velocity times the sine of the projection angle. So what we're going to do as well, guys, is we're going to use the fact that at the maximum height, the velocity is equal to zero. Once we know that, we're going to employ the formula V equals U plus AT to find the time that the object is in the air for. So let's get to it. So we have velocity is equal to u plus at. Now this, guys, the velocity, the final velocity, at the maximum height is going to be zero. Now our initial velocity is in the vertical direction, is u times the sine of theta. So we're gonna write that one down, plus. Now this is going to be, acceleration is gravity. So rather than writing plus, because gravity is working in the opposite direction to the initial velocity in the vertical direction, we're gonna write minus g times t. So what we can do then guys is we can rearrange this to solve for time and we find that time we take the u sine theta over to the side and then we divide it by negative g the negatives will cancel out and we'll have u sine theta divided by g. Cool so this is the time that the object is going to be in the air until its maximum height with regards to its initial velocity and its projection angle. So what we do then guys is because we know that the time to get down to the bottom of the projectile's flight is just double the time that it takes to get to the top is we multiply the time by 2. So we could write here if you like the total time is equal to 2 times the time to get to the maximum height which is also equal to 2u sine theta over g. Cool, so that's the total time that this object is going to be in the air with a projection angle of theta and an initial velocity or projection velocity of u. Okay, so now we've found the time that the projectile is in the air for. What we have to do is we have to use that time along with the component of the initial velocity in the horizontal direction to find the range. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use the equation of motion displacement is equal to velocity times time. And in this case, our velocity is our component of the projection velocity in the horizontal direction, or u times the cosine of theta. And we have to multiply that by the time that it's in the air for, which we've just previously calculated. 2u sine 
theta divided by g. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to put both of these together. So we're actually going to do that multiplication, and we're going to find out that our range, or s, is equal to 2u squared sine theta cos theta divided by g. And that is our range for a projectile fired at an initial velocity of u with a projection angle of theta. Okay, now onto the complement of our original angle, and hopefully you guys will see that the only difference with this and our original triangle is obviously the angle. We have 90 minus theta, and in our components of our projection velocity, instead of just theta, we have 90 minus theta. Now, the method for finding the range of the complementary angle is exactly the same as the uh, first angle theta. The only difference is it might get a little bit tricky with the algebra because we're going to have to involve these trigonometric identities which I've listed in this box here. So let's get to it. Okay, so like our original angle theta, we're going to start by finding the time in which the projectile is in the air. So to do this, what we're going to use is we're going to use one of our equations of motion, V equals U plus AT. Now, this is our final velocity is equal to our initial velocity plus an acceleration times time. Now, what we know, guys, is at the maximum height here, the final velocity is going to be zero. We also know that the initial velocity we're going to be using is the projection velocity in the vertical direction. So we're going to be going, this is equal to u sine of 90 minus theta. And because gravity, again, like the previous angle, is working the opposite direction to this, rather than going plus at, we're going to go minus g times time t. So we can rearrange this like we did in the previous angle to time is equal to u sine of 90 minus theta divided by g. Cool. Okay, guys, so from here, what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this compound angle using the trigonometric identity for sine in this box here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that time is equal to u, and rather than writing sine of 90 minus theta, I'm going to employ this, in this trigonometric identity here. So we're going to have sine of 90 times cosine of theta plus the cosine of 90 times the sine of theta. Great, and that's all divided by g. So from here, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate some of these trigonometric uh, ratios that we have here that can be evaluated, which are the sine of 90 and the cosine of 90. So from here, we're going to say that t is equal to u times the sine of 90 is equal to 1 times the cosine of theta, so we're just going to be left with cosine of theta, and to that we're going to add the cosine of 90 is 0 times the sine of theta, which is still 0, so we're going to add 0, all divided by g. So obviously this can be further simplified to u cos theta on g, and again, like before, the time that it takes to get from here to the maximum height, so the launch to the maximum height is the same as it takes for to get from the maximum height back to the altitude at which the projectile was launched. So we have to times our time by 2. So we're going to say the total time is equal to 2t, which is equal to 2u cosine theta divided by g. Great. So from here, guys, what we're going to do is then we're going to use this time and our horizontal velocity to find the range of the complementary angle. So now we've found the total time that the projectile is airborne for for the complement of the original angle. It's time to find the associated range of that angle. So we're going to use the equation of motion displacement is equal to velocity times time. And the velocity we're going to use is simply the horizontal component of the initial projection velocity because that doesn't change during the course of the flight of the projectile. The time was found in this last part of this question and we're just going to multiply them together. So let's go about doing that. So let's start down here. We have S is equal to velocity. Rather than writing V, I'm going to write U 
times the cosine of 90, subtract the angle, multiplied by t, which in this case, the time that the projectile is airborne for is 2u cos theta on g. Now, like we did in the previous part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to simplify this compound angle here using the second identity in this trigonometric identities box here, the cosine one. And for that, I get s is equal to u, I'll put it in brackets, cosine, I use cosine of 90 times the cosine theta minus, but in this case, it's going to be plus because that's a minus, so it's the opposite, the sine of 90 times the sine of theta. And to all of that, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that by 2u cosine theta on g. So in this case, what I've got is you've got cosine of a plus or minus b. Here I have a and that's b. So moving on, what we have now is we're going to have s is equal to u and here we've got the cosine of 90 which is 0 plus the sine of 90 which is 1 times sine of theta so we've got u times the sine of theta multiplied by 2u cos theta over g now this can be further simplified guys by combining the u's and putting everything over g so we finally end up with the range of the complement is equal to 2u squared sine theta cos theta on g and you'll find guys that that is exactly the same as the range of the projectile that we had with the initial angle theta rather than 90 minus theta so there you have it guys what we've been able to do is prove that for an arbitrary projectile velocity u and if we don't consider any aerodynamic factors such as wind resistance projectiles that are fired at complementary angles i.e at particular angle and then 90 minus that angle will have identical ranges. Now the way we did this guys is we got our initial projectile velocity u and using the firing angle theta or 90 minus theta we're able to break it up into horizontal and vertical components. Using the vertical component what we're able to do is we're able to determine how long in terms of time the projectile was airborne for. What we're able to do is we're able to take that and using the fact that horizontal velocity in projectile motion doesn't change throughout its flight, we're able to use that time and multiply it by the horizontal component of the projectile's initial velocity. Once we've done that, for both theta and 90 minus theta, we're able to use a little bit of massaging on the trigonometric ratios to show that both of them produce exactly the same range, i.e. this and that are exactly the same. So this is a pretty like simple proof, guys. If you understand how projectile motion works, you understand how to find time and range in projectile motion questions which give you real figures. Because all this does is you go through exactly the same process but just using arbitrary sort of letters instead so you're trying to make it more of a generalized case so i hope the video helped guys try solving this by yourself without looking at the video actually try and work through now you've got all the clues on how to do it if you work through it a few times it'll stay in your head i've had this in my brain since year 12 so yeah just keep practicing 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 guys if you like the video please give it a thumbs up i'm only a small channel so any thumbs up do help um, if you have any problems with what I said in this video, leave them in the comments section below. Um, if you have any ideas on new videos that I can um, put out, if you have any problems with any of your schoolwork, also leave them in the comments section below. But finally, guys, just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. These are very much practice makes perfect kind of subjects. But all through that practicing, just keep on ensuring that you're still enjoying your physics. And I'll see you guys again soon.